This is Clean Radio. Welcome, everybody out there listening to Clean Radio on our flagship radio station. Talk Radio 790 KABC and iHeart Radio. Talk Radio 570 KVI, Seattle, Washington. Our second week there, FM News 101 KXL, Portland, Oregon, and AM 1370, The Cast, Astoria, Oregon. I'd like to welcome everybody out there listening to Clean Radio to show about addiction, recovery, and everything pretty much in the middle. Um, we have a great show. I want you to give us a call tonight. The number is 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. Call in with any questions you have about addiction and share and, or call in with some stories you might have about addiction. We have a great show tonight. Andrew's not in tonight, obviously, but my sort of co-host with the most will be one of my oldest and closest friends. Not closest, but oldest. And uh, Louis Sabatasso making Hi, his second appearance. I'm offended that you don't consider me one of your closest friends. Sure, I, you know, I, it's, I think it's about still, you a lot. It takes 20 years it to become on that. Uh, but Louis one of my closest friends and one of my oldest and dearest friends. And um, he uh, and I wanted to make that sh our show tonight, you know, Thanksgiving coming up. I wanted to make it, you know, that we have friends in the studio. We have people, you know, that are close to us in life. And uh, Louis, one of the things I've learned, you know, in many years, because I used to not have fond memories of the holidays, you know, before I got sober, I, you know, and one of the cool things about sobriety is I've learned to make new memories. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to say more or are you just going to? No, I'm joking. But yeah, there's a. Uh, uh the greatest thing about the holidays now are that uh, there's so much more. I mean, listen, when I was out and getting loaded, my holidays consisted of what psych ward was I in? Like what sort of, you know, what food were they giving out at the psych ward? Or by myself, wherever I was, literally spending holidays alone. Thanksgiving first, then my birthday, which is December 21st, and then Christmas by myself. So now, like last year, was awesome because I went to... I started off at the at the cabin, the morning cabin meeting, which was amazing. Which is a 12-step meeting for people out there. Yeah, which we don't, you know, get yeah. the specifics about. But I started off there. Then I went to this other spot for another, like, recovery-based sort of dinner, lunch kind of dinner. And then I went to my family's for a couple hours. Then I came back up here and hung out with some friends up here. So it went from having literally nothing to do on Thanksgiving and the holidays to just such an abundance of things to do, which is amazing. Were you scared before? Because you were just getting sober at the time. Yeah. Was it scary? Because I think a lot of people out there that are listening right now, it's such a big fear people have as they're newly sober, family members. You know, if you're a family member and you're, you are you have a loved one that's newly sober, it's a terrifying time. It's it's It, it can be uh, horribly terrifying, especially with the family like mine that is very... Um, sort of loud and uh, aggressive and um, and is not incredibly hugely supportive of me and anything that I do is stuff I want to do for work and being in entertainment. There's not a lot of like, wow, Louie, go for it. This is awesome. <laughs> they're in the food business. My dad was in the pizza business. They're all in the restaurant business. So there's not a lot of support. And I go down there and there's this thing that they do, which is like, Someone in my family will do something obnoxious. And they're like, oh, God, they're just such a sabotasso. Oh, they're just such sabotasso. I'm like, what the hell is that? What does that mean to be a sabot? It's like it doesn't, you know, it just. Well, what does it mean? I have no idea, Judah. I have uh, no idea well, what that means. But apparently <laughs> it means something strong. We're going to have to find that out. By the way, if you just tuned in, you are listening to Clean Radio. Um, give us a call at 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. I'd also like to welcome everybody out there listening on our live stream. Go to cleanradio.com and you can see what the four of us in this studio look like tonight. Um, but handsome. also, so you just shot a movie, right? I did. I just shot a movie. I did a uh, movie called Western Religion, which is actually a Western. Uh, and I started a company to do it through, which is called Third uh, Third Partner Pictures. We just uh, we have offices at Sunset Gower Studios, and it's amazing because it shows you the power of uh, the power of recovery. Because it was probably it was about a year ago that I was living um, in a. Uh, uh, a sober living with literally nothing. I had like a pair of pants and a t-shirt and some sweats. And it was right near Sunset Gower Studios. And I used to jog around the studio every day and I would stop at the gate and I would look in and go, I am going to be on this lot. I'm going to be on this lot. And it did, did that. I remember that about three weeks ago as I was walking on that lot going to my office. I was like, wow, that was a year ago that I did that and we just did this movie and it's, it's all because of, you know. And this is your second one you've done this year or... 
No, no, no. Yeah. We did wish I did this one with James O'Brien, who I did wish you were here with, but I came in here last time to talk about that. Yeah. Was just when, that came out right. on iTunes when I came in here to talk about that. This is the second one I've done with um, with James and Gary Cohn. Yeah. So I'll, you know. But I got to tell you, that's one of my favorite things because I've seen you, I've seen you struggle, you know, and I've seen you jogging. Yeah. <laughs> when it was <laughs> when thing when things weren't going well. When I didn't really have any place to go. Well, we, right. You were jogging running. down Santa Monica Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to see you now, and to see you, you know, to see you living your dreams, because you know, a lot of times people often say, well, "I want something back." You know, I, I want to get sober to get it back. You're not getting stuff back. You're getting new stuff. Oh, absolutely. That you didn't even have in the first place. Yeah, there's no, there, there was no, you know, everything I've ever had, ever, ever, has been a result of being sober. And that's in the past. That's uh, in, in the result of being in recovery. And the problem is, you know, you know, uh, gaining some recovery, gaining a life for a couple of years. And then, as you know, which has been my story, something invariably happens and I throw it away. Let's welcome also, because I've seen him around. I've seen Jonathan around. Jonathan, you got to come a little closer to the microphone. Your name is Jonathan Freeman. You're a comedian. Yep. I hear you're very, I've actually never heard you're funny, but you look funny. <laughs> and um, you worked on the movie with Louis? I did, yeah. Uh, I wrote a little article for the movie on Los Angeles Film and Music in that he gave me an opportunity to be an extra if I liked. And uh, I reminded him that I have a theater degree and decided <laughs> to uh, come in for the audition and and I got my nice big moment with Louis. We had a cool scene where I was his uh, uh, 19th century drug dealer, essentially. So uh, it was just a couple centuries late. Yeah, yeah, for the realism of it. But he, he seemed to fit right in with the moment of needing his morphine and uh, me being his supplier. So that's pretty time. amazing, actually. So both of you, I mean, and, and I don't want to break anybody's anonymity, but it's sort of a pretty amazing thing is that you got, you know, you're young, you've gone through your issues. And it's just an incredible thing because I think sometimes people don't see the positives. You know, we watch the news, we see the people that die, but nobody ever talks about the sober guy living a good life. Yeah, absolutely. And there's there's and, a, and we know so many people, Judah, that have that have gotten uh, that have that have entered recovery and entered this world of recovery that have gone from absolutely less than zero to just these amazing amazing lives right and we see that all the time but i don't think a lot of other people realize that right because you know that doesn't sell on the news no you know it's you know it's the robert downey jr thing that's so you know but it's like if that if, there's so many champions like that so that, many that have but it doesn't it doesn't make good take you know good copy well that's obviously a very dramatic one as right. well i mean you go from being in prison to you two, go from less than zero less yeah. than zero yeah. to very two very successful movie franchises right. and being one of the most powerful people that's not that's a very exaggerated story but it's a very exaggerated similar story because right. there's so many stories like that that aren't that dramatic and that but that are out there and the reason i wanted to talk about this tonight because I, I i know a lot of people's biggest fear were coming into the holiday season <laughs> And people are going through a rough time, and people, it's so hard when somebody hits that bottom to see the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel. And one of the biggest reasons sometimes we do share our experience and our strength is that people could see that. Absolutely. Exactly. Because that, I mean, that, listen, that's the whole key to this, to this whole thing. It's like, you know, I try to think, I try to put myself in the position of just those so intensely horrible dark times. Like the, I mean, just absolutely hopeless dark times, um, being in the hospital, uh, with absolutely nobody, nobody coming to visit, nobody to call, you know, and, and they, uh, I was in the hospital a couple times for, for Christmas and they actually would give you the Christmas gift, which was a pair of black <laughs> socks and a pair of white socks. And that's what I got. I, I, I want to share this. You brought back a memory cause I was in rehab and they gave me a box of chocolates. Yeah. And I remember there were like 29 chocolates in this and I made a deal that I was going to eat one for every day I was in rehab <laughs> and I actually made it through eating, you know, and that's when you had your food issue as well. That's, that's yeah, exactly that's right. Really and if you good. just tuned in, you're listening to clean radio. We're in the studio tonight with one of my closest and oldest and dearest friends, Louis Sabatas, who's on who's living an amazing life that I, I used to pray about and I used to dream about. I, I, I'm just going to share a personal story. Louis is the, one of the biggest Pittsburgh Steelers fans. And a bunch of years ago when Louis wasn't doing so well, my friend Joel and I, we, we, we were rooting for the other, we were rooting for the Steelers so hard because we said, no matter wherever you are, like if hopefully you're alive, like you, that the Steelers win to bring you that moment of joy. Cause 
when you're using it, it's such little joy I could uh, wish for somebody and now it's totally reversed like I don't even care what happened yeah, you know. to the Steelers now to the Steelers or the now, Giants and okay so give us a call it's 800-222-5222 that's 800-222-5222 also Jonathan Freeman is here comedian writer yep. and uh, extra on uh, <laughs> Louis' new movie Western Religion let's go to Joe in uh, Kent uh, Washington welcome to Clean Radio Joe hi um, well the reason I'm calling is um I was an alcoholic up until about a year ago. In fact, I just celebrated my one-year anniversary. Happy birthday. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, I was in the treatment for, um, you know, for alcohol, no other substances. And uh, the question that I have is, you know, life kind of sucks without, you know, alcohol, but it sucks even worse with it. Mm -hmm. So is there any educational any books out there, anything that could actually help you control if I was to start drinking again, but not in the, you know, in the mode that I've, I've been doing it before. Joe, what you're <laughs> asking, I, Joe, what you're asking is the question for thousands of years people have been asking, and that's, um, can I control my drinking? Yeah. The, yeah, and uh, and and it's, it's, it's sort of the great yeah. obsession of every problem drinking. Right. You obsess about that. You, and the answer is from everything I've experienced is a resounding no. Right. There's no way to do it. It's if you're an alcoholic, which it sounds like you're pretty resigned to the fact that you are, the only the only solution is, is total abstinence, you know. Um, oh. Unfortunately, yeah. there is no. And jo that's Joe, let me ask you a question. Are you making 12-step meetings? No, actually, you know, uh, I don't have any cravings. Uh, you know, I went to one of the local well-known hospital that's been advertised on the radio for a while now and uh, you know I, I've been through that treatment successfully and I don't crave it I don't but I just look around you know through my relatives friends and they all enjoying themselves and that's I have those memories but I don't have the cravings which but that's part of the problem Joe the part of the problem is that you've stopped drinking right Mm -hmm. But you haven't, you know, one of the great things about the 12 steps or fellowships, right? Why do people go to church or temple? They go to pray, but they also go to feel a community. It's the fellowship. And that's, right now you're yeah. missing that community. You've essentially stopped drinking and stopped hanging out at bars, I would imagine you were going to, right? Uh, well, I wasn't, you know, I was, uh, I was uh, drinking with uh, relatives and friends. Right, so it was uh, social. Mainly, no, no bars, right. so to speak. But my you were socializing. My worst problem was, my worst problem was uh, you know, I was drinking home alone. Right. And uh, heavily. And, uh, you know, I hit it well. And, you know, I got to the point where, you know, I had to do something. And I've been drinking for the last 15, 20 years. And I'm close. I'm pushing 50 right now. So I'm telling you, it's just, it wasn't, my, my life was miserable. You know, it's just like I, right. I feel like I'm 20 something again, you know. And, That's amazing. And I, <laughs> Joe, can I give yeah. you a bit of a suggestion? Okay, I want you to look for a 12-step meeting in your area. Okay? Okay. And I want you to go to one this week. Just go to one. Okay. And it's not about the cravings. And I want you to go to this meeting, and I want you to raise your hand if you get a chance and say, Hi, I'm Joe. I have a year, and I'm new. I'm, I, you know, I'm new to this meeting. And I mm -hmm. want you to just test that out. Mm hmm And then in next week... Call us back, and I want you to let us know how it goes. Okay. But do you I get why I'm asking you, Joe? Yeah, no, I know. I understand. I understand. I just, I never, you know, I never, uh, in fact, one of my neighbor, uh, one of my neighbors actually is going to one of these meetings in AA, I think is what it is. Yes. And, um, and um, I think I went with him, uh, if I remember, because I was <laughs> wasted most of the time, but I went with him to one of these meetings, and um, it didn't appeal to me, but you know, uh, I'll, I'll try to do that. I'll when did you go? Thing. God, that was probably three or four years. Oh, ago. so you're still drinking at the time? Oh God, yeah, yeah. yeah so that then, wouldn't yeah, appeal no, to me crazy. either. Going it'll, to it'll be a little bit different yeah. of an experience going now. And just remember, the first thing you said to us was that you were having. How do you fill your time? because you're not filling it with drinking anymore. Who do you hang out with? Because you're not hanging out with your drinking buddies anymore. And the next thing you said was. Um, although you're not craving, is there any book that exists that can teach you how to drink? Right. <laughs> like right. not alcohol. Okay. So both of those factors can be solved 
in 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 twelve step fellowship, right. and, and that's the amazing. And thing. And Joe, here's the thing: the reason why we we could joke about this stuff is because every single guy in this room right now has asked the question you're Absolutely. asking. Oh yeah, and and yeah. failed miserably at the test. Terribly. Okay, Joe. Yeah. I used to think okay, I could. I, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. I I, I used to be you know. When I uh, like 18, I started drinking very heavily, like whiskey and booze and stuff, and different types of stuff. And my friend said to me, "Hey, do you want to go get a beer?" And I thought that sounded so adult, you know. And I so I went to have a beer with him, and I remember thinking, and I couldn't stand it. It was a Heineken, and I hated it. And I remember thinking, this is the answer to drinking too much. I'll just drink beer. Joe, I huh. kid you not, that night I was drinking five pitchers of beer. Instantly. Oh, instantly. It didn't matter because I figured out a way to get through the, te the taste. And so those, all those things. So I want you to try. You'll call your neighbor this week? Yeah, I'll, I'll call him. Uh, you know, I'll call him. There's a few. I think there's a few places around town that, yeah. you know, I can check out. But I'll call him, you know, I'll, call, I'll try to get all of my neighbor and see if he's still. I'm, I'm pretty sure he is. Um, and, and, you know, I'm going to try to go to one. Just kind of yeah. see what's going on. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I just, like I said, it just kind of sucks. It just, I, you we, know. Uh, Joe, we hear I you. I up and, I, and all of a sudden, you know, um, <laughs> you know, and I don't want to get hooked on anything else. Not that I was thinking about it, but just, you know, it's easy to probably fall, fall prey or go back to, like you said, go back to where I was before. And I'm, I'm terrified of it. Good. Trust me. But I was just, I was just, uh, in fact, um, just a little story, you know, we, my wife and I, we celebrated, you know, our 27th, uh, 27th anniversary, and we were out of town, and uh, we're having dinner, and so I was, uh, I was talking to my wife, and I looked around, and, you know, everybody was having a glass of wine, I was telling my wife, you know, I can, you know, I can try, just, you know, at least a four-hour anniversary, I can do this. And my wife said, "Don't, don't, don't even think about it." I said, "No, I'm going to do this." So I, I, I ordered a glass of wine. When she, when the waitress put that glass of wine on my desk, my wife said, "Well, this is uh, this is the key to your uh, to reopening the floodgates." Is what she told me. And I was like, "I smell, I smell the the wine, and everything." And I was thinking, "God, Michael, is this really gonna? Is this really happening?" So I didn't, I didn't test it. I put it down. I paid for it. I put it down. Never drank it. Good. That's great, so Joe. I, I, I mean the right and it doesn't. And then you know? the weird thing, Joe, the weird thing too is it doesn't seem like that. It doesn't seem like the, the math doesn't seem to add up. Like right. how is going to this twelve-step meeting? How is raising your hand? How is introducing yourself? How is saying, "Hey, this is me, and I, I have a year, and but I'm new to this thing." How is any of that going to solve any of the stuff that you're talking about? The answer is, I have no idea, but I know that it does. Yeah, I know that that's a math problem that works every yeah. single time. It's one of those two plus two things that doesn't make four. It just, Joe, I, I promise you, and I know you know. Here's the great thing, Joe, and I, I, I want to give you major. Kudos, because you're calling in, and you're basically, you know you can't drink. So your struggle... I know yeah, I know I can. Right, <laughs> so your struggle's not that right now. Your struggle is, how can I live the greatest life in the world? Yeah. And you're, exactly. you know, and I, I got to tell you this. I, I, I am with people all the time, Joe. I, I would, last week I was at a hockey game. I go to sporting events. I go to concerts all the time, and I remember them in the morning. Yeah. Not one part of me at that concert goes, I want, I'm, Joe, go to a bar at two in the morning. I promise you that'll keep you sober for a month. Okay. Cause. And here's the other thing. Yeah. And, and, and this is, and I keep, I've been hearing this a lot recently and it's really kind of awesome. By the way, you're listening to clean radio. Sorry. Uh, what, this, and I've been here again, I've been hearing this a lot lately and it's, and it's really an amazing thing, but n never. In the entire time that I've uh, been sober, have I ever woke up one morning and been like, God, I really should have drank at that thing last night. I really should have drank at that party. I really should have gotten right. loaded before I went to the thing. Never once has that happened. Not once. And that's the amazing uh -huh. thing. And it's so, Joe, I want you to give us a call next week, okay? Okay, I'll do that. I'll try, I'll try to get, uh, you know. To Even if you meetings. don't, give me a call next week. Good job, okay, Joe. Joe. Keep it up. Happy holidays and happy Thanksgiving. Are you allowed to wish happy Thanksgiving or is that sacrament? You, know? you can do happy Thanksgiving. Okay, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Um, and if you just tuned in, you are listening to Clean Radio. The number here is 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. Give us a call. We're in the studio tonight with my closest and oldest and dearest friends who's on a resurgence of life 
and uh, doing amazing things. Louis Sabatasso, Jonathan Freeman, comedian, writer, extra. Your newest um, and most distant friend. My newest <laughs> and most distant friend. And uh, sober, too. And, uh, you know, we're about to go to break. Todd will get to you right after the break. But I just want to know, what was it like? What were you like? How long are you sober now? Uh, 15 months. So you're 15 months sober. I want people out there to get the picture because you're in the studio tonight. You look pretty good. Um, you got stuff going on. What do you look like 15 months ago? I was a wreck 15 months ago. I, I just I think I was a little more overweight, too much beer. But uh, I kept going, you know, all the drugs I could get my hands on and the alcohol, and it was purgatory. Every day was exactly the same, essentially. And are you not, you're, so you're a comedian. Are you still funny? I find myself uh, a little less scared, even though I thought that was like the biggest like hurdle to leap into being sober when I'm on stage because I, I get high right before I'd go on stage. And right. I could walk through that, but I'd forget all my jokes. <laughs> Did not help at all. <laughs> yeah, I think but some the, of those might have helped now if but, you forgot but, a few of but, those. Oh, yeah, right. But the, but the reason I ask is because you constantly hear that, Louis. I mean, yeah. you constantly hear people go, how can I play music sober? You know, I can't be, you know, it's, it, it, you know, and we know some of the most amazing sober musicians. I've, I've, yeah. How can I do comedy sober? Because when people are using the idea of doing stuff sober, isn't it's not in the realm of thinking. Well, it's insane. I thought I'd be more creative, you know, when I was high, but then after a while, it stopped working whatsoever. And then I look back at the jokes that I wrote, and I was like, "Oh my God, who is this guy? I should be wearing a helmet. This is ridiculous." You know, this and it not- always and it and it always starts that way with everybody. It always starts with people that come in the program, and they're like, "You know, how am I going to do this sober?" And they'll talk about it. I, I, I was at a thing last night, and this woman was such a brilliant writer, and she was talking about the fact that she was never going to be able to write. Sober, And maybe for the first year and a half, she didn't, and she sort of couldn't. But now she's writing better stuff than she's ever done. Every musician, the same thing. However long it's going to take, eventually they end up being more creative than they've ever been. Every comic, every actor, right. always the same. There's a process that you have to go through, but once you get through it, there's nobody who after who's doing that for a living after years and years and sobriety is like, you know what, I just, I, 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 just I, I, I failed miserably at this because I'm sober. It just so the, doesn't happen. The so. biggest reason I'm bringing this up is because family members, this isn't only for the addicts. You know, I, I, you know my family, I put them through torture. And one of the scariest things families have is like when their son or their loved one's getting sober is they're in turmoil too. Like if it's a husband, what are we going to do about the future? What, how are we going to get through? How are we going to survive? And the, the message we're trying to tell you tonight is that through recovery, we've seen, we've seen amazing things happen. People get better jobs than they ever in their wildest dreams thought they could get. And uh, that's the message I really want to... And that's such a huge, 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 strong message because it's, it's just the truth. And, you know, I, again, I can only put myself in... I, I can only speak from my own experience and put myself in the position back when I was completely hopeless. And you, that's not... It's not uh, that's, that's a thought that would keep me loaded for a long time, which is what's the point, you know, there's what what what's going to change and it's 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 very important to realize and if you just tuned in you're listening to clean radio in the studio tonight with louis sabotasso jonathan freeman i'm going to bring my boy in after the break buddy totten delmer buddy totten and if you just tuned in you are listening to clean radio give us a call the number is 800-222-5222 Eight hundred two 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 five two two two. i want to hear about your thanksgiving your dreams coming up after the break you're listening to clean radio Are you or someone you care about addicted to drugs or alcohol? Addiction ruins lives and destroys families. Bring an end to the pain and suffering by calling Clean Treatment Centers. Clean has helped people from around the world break free by not only treating the addiction, but the underlying causes and providing vital aftercare so people can get clean and stay clean with no gimmicks and no false promises. If you need immediate assistance or just have questions, call Clean Treatment Centers for guidance. A much better life awaits. Now back to Andrew Spanswick and Judah Friedman. Welcome back to Clean Radio. Andrew's not in tonight, but my co-host with the most tonight is uh, Louis Sabatasso, old dear friend and close friend, and starring in a new movie that'll be out later this year, I would imagine, called Western Religion. Western Religion, yeah. Hopefully later this year, maybe early next year. And uh, Jonathan Friedman, comic. He's like the five-tool player to this kid, Jonathan. He could write, he performs, he sings, he dances. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he Jonathan does. Friedman, and uh, to his right, who hasn't been introduced yet, but we'll get into him soon. Just say a quick hello, Buddy Totten. Hello. And uh, he's very nervous. Okay, but let's get right to the calls. Uh, let's go to Todd in Salem, Oregon. Welcome to Clean Radio, Todd. Hi, Clean Radio. How are you, Todd? 
I'm doing all right. I have a I have a war story, uh, but this is like a real war story. Uh, my family's been sending me in, in some uh, information about my um, descendants, and uh, like uh, one of my great uncles was a uh, nephew of Andrew Jackson. Oh, wow. And um, he is a famous war hero. His name was Earl Earl Van Dorn, and uh, he was a he was a womanizer and a drinker, uh, very impulsive. Yeah, um, I take after him. So pretty much, bit. yeah, 200 years of genetics from Andrew yeah. Jackson to Todd in Salem, Oregon. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't know. I've been feel, I, when I wake up now, I feel guilty sometimes. I, I just don't understand why I'm feeling that way. Because of your great 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 <laughs> uncle. <laughs> because that's, um, Todd, what's going on? You're you're um, uh, you're 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 sober, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm in the hospital. You're in the hospital. He's actually a very a, interesting story. Todd here is uh, in the hospital where they flew, where they shot one flew of the cuckoo's nest. Wow. It's actually still a hospital. Oh, you're in that. You're in that. That's the, that's an organ. Yeah. Yeah. And that's they actually have a museum inside the mental inside the psychiatric unit, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the only museum, only mental health museum in the United States. I think. You know what else is amazing? The guy who played the doctor in that film was the actual doctor there yeah. at the time and he was so brilliant they're like dude is he gotta, still is he still around i would doubt that he's no, still he around no he died but his his daughter is a doctor here that's, that's amazing. so so Todd here's the thing it's like you you you've done such amazing work on yourself you know yeah. i Todd's Todd's called in he's dealt with every single addiction known to man and you know he's had issues with uh, his metabolism because some of the antidepressants that he needs to take keep weight on him and Todd, I just want you to know because you called it. That's that's very normal that you feel those things because a lot of us, especially guys, have a hard time sometimes admitting they have food issues or they have body image issues. Jonathan, you're Absolutely. shaking your head. I've, 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 I seen myself on Xbox. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> you saw yourself on what? Xbox Connect. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I look like yeah. a big blog. <laughs> the character you made for yourself? Uh, no, I guess that, uh, no. No, there's a new thing camp. that you can do. Yeah, you can you can talk back and forth, like you know the Ray the Ray Lewis and uh, oh, okay and that commercial that they're doing. Okay, yeah, the, yeah. Ray Lewis and the other guy that just retired. Um, yeah, that's amazing. You know what? And and the whole body issue with with uh, the men body issue thing is obviously very very very. Um, uh, prevalent down here in the city of angels, especially oh, yeah. in the recovery world. I mean, there's like, it's just, it's everywhere. And the amazing thing is I had, I have a couple of close friends. I won't mention their names, but Judah knows them who have always had these really weird food and body issues. And I never, ever got it. I just didn't get it. And I didn't get it because I've always been painfully thin and never had to worry about it until about four years ago. And I started gaining weight and I instantly got it. Yeah, Painfully. I get it. You get it's like but when you when you're not used, and it's hard to, it's for a guy really, because guy, it's not it's one really of those hard. things that you want to walk up to a guy and go, "Yo, bro, how you doing?" Yeah, I'm feeling a little fat today. Feeling yeah. a little bloated, yeah. to be honest yeah. with you. you. Know, how does thank my you shirt for, look? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's a really hard thing. So, Todd, I want to give you, a, I want to commend you a lot for talking about this stuff, and that's what's going to set you free. I'm going to do some uh, um, some meditations, like. Um, uh, mindful eating. I'm going to write about what I eat. Like today I wrote about eating oranges. I hate eating oranges. They're <laughs> sour and they're messy. And But they're a lot better for you than like meatloaf and gravy. Oranges yeah. are significantly less fattening than, than meatloaf. Todd, we got so. a bunch of calls lined up. What are you going to do for Thanksgiving? Do they have something over there for you? Um, I'm probably just going to write poetry and stuff. I'm a really good poet. I was hoping I could share one of I'll, my poems. I'll tell you what, Todd. Give us a call next week, and I would love to hear one of your poems. Okay, thank you. Call a little earlier, and we would definitely love to hear that. Okay, awesome. You guys are really awesome. You guys weren't on last week. and um, No, we were. We had a problem with the feed in Oregon. Oh, well, it's in my treatment care plan that I stay up from dinner and they bring me a clam shell. So I love that. It, how, in your how treatment great is that? care plan, it yeah. says listen to clean. clean that's radio. amazing. It's, all, yes. it's, it's amazing. And, and it's and even uh, more amazing that that's happening at the hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah it really is. Yeah. My psychiatrist ordered it for me. <laughs> awesome. He's man. a really great guy. So, Todd, thanks again. And give, okay. give us a call next week and tell us your poem. Have a good Thanksgiving, okay. bud. Have a great Thanksgiving. Okay, Happy Turkey Day. And if you just tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio. That's pretty awesome. Give us a call at 800-222-5222, 800-222-5222. The awesome part is that one of our loyal listeners is in the facility 
where they shot one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And it's still a facility. Yeah. And it's in his treatment plan <laughs> that he gets to listen, <laughs> to, to, listen clean, to clean radio. Clean with the K radio. I, I, I mean, if I never do anything again that, for the rest of my life, that's 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 the deal. That's amazing. I, I want to visit the museum but be able to leave. I actually want <laughs> It would be great. If they, you know what would be really cool one day like, when Todd gets better is that they made him the tour guide. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually. When Todd's ready to leave that place, I'm gonna start a petition that says Todd is the tour director of the One Flew of the Cuckoo's yeah, Nest Museum. Or at least one of the tour guides. You shouldn't, you know, have one a petition yeah. to be made the tour director. I see that would be alcoholism. <laughs> okay, we'll make him like a, instantly. A, I wanted him to be president of all <laughs> mental facilities in Oregon. It's my job. <laughs> Nobody else's. And that's Louis Sabatasa. That's jo um, Jonathan Freeman. <laughs> Next to him is Buddy Totten. But he's also a very close friend, and he's a loyal listener to the show. But one of the coolest things, am I allowed to talk a little bit about your family? Sure, of course. What, I don't know if Pete, you know this about Buddy. Is Actually, his father was one of the biggest directors in the 50s and the 60s, directed you know shows like Gunsmoke, Gunsmoke wow. and, and all those things. He's, you know, I just did a Western, Buddy. I, I heard that. Yeah. And he was so, actually very good friends. His father was Sam Peckinpah. That nice. is amazing. It's, uh, it, I mean, and if you're just listening, it may, might mean nothing to you, but it's sort of a cool thing, Sam Pack and Pa. So, buddy, welcome to Clean Radio. Thank you so much. And you're sober? I am. Uh, this year I celebrated five years clean. And you're living your, you know, you're living a dream in a sense. Congrats. Uh, I am, definitely. And I hate saying this on this because it's so cliche, living a dream, but for us, you know, and I really believe this, Louis, it's a lot of times people talk about this stuff. Like when we were drinking, we had dreams. You know, when we were using, we had dreams. It was just we couldn't. You know, when you have addiction and alcoholism, whatever your dreams are, it, they just don't, they don't come. No, and, the you know, also a, a, a huge problem with, uh, with uh, alcoholics probably in general and their own dreams is, you know, the own, the, the, the fears that we have and the fears of, of success or the fears of failure, the kind of the same fears that everybody has, but with alcohol, with alcoholics, it just seems like those things can be so much gnarlier. Right. And so much, and, and Judah's bringing up family a lot. We're talking about family and Thanksgiving and going home for Thanksgiving. And, you know, one of my reservations about going home for Thanksgiving is, is I, I have such amazing friends that are like family to me up right. in LA. These are people that I've known for the past 20 years. They know everything about me. These people are like family to me. I want to spend Thanksgiving with them. I don't necessarily want to go home to my family. You know, uh, aside from the fact that a lot of, a lot of the, you know, we, we, we always talk about this too. It's that, you know, our families know what Bush, what buttons to push because they installed them. Right. You know, and that's oh, yeah. a very, it's a corny saying and it's a, it's a weird like victimizing pointing fingers thing, but that's not really what it is. And, you know, I, I am going home for at least a couple hours on Thursday and it's, it can be a strange thing and it can be a, a sort of a daunting thing. And dad, if you're listening, I love you, but I'm, just, <laughs> I'm glad you heard that. I actually just sent a text to my dad saying I was on the radio. I hope you just heard that because that's the truth. And he said, that's all you could do. Just the radio, yeah, not TV. Exactly. That, 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 Cause that's the problem. I'd be like, why are you on set? Why are you on that radio station and not the other one? Um, so if you just tuned in, you listen to clean radio, let's go to Marie in uh, San Jose. Welcome to clean radio, Marie. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Okay, um, I had a question about um, antidepressants uh, for former pill addicts. Right. Um, I, I've been clean for a year and three months, and my drugs of choice were Vicodin, and later on in my addiction, um, Ativan also joined that. And um, my psychiatrist wants me to uh, go on an antidepressant. I had been on Cymbalta very briefly during my active addiction on the lowest dosage possible, and I did not react well to it. And um, so on that level, I'm hesitant to try it again. But also, now that I'm clean, I'm, I, I was a straight pill popper. Mm -hmm. I have never done any other drugs, um, no alcohol. Pills are enough, um, by the way. Pills, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The, because they are, because it is medication, I have a very distorted relationship with medication even mm. now when i take something as simple as a tylenol right there is this kind of level of excitement and acceptance even though logically i know that it's just a tylenol there's still this level of, yeah. oh i'm taking a pill that's normal and, and i know and it bothers me so much that that that's there so i know there's still this this train of thought in ingrained in me i guess the addict me that says Take a pill and you'll be fine. That's the answer. That's 
you know. Okay. So that that's gives the solution a solution to everything. And I, I'm afraid that going on antidepressants again will reinforce that train of thought that I still have that a pill will solve all your problems. Wow, and I get that. Like yeah, that that's... it'll trigger, maybe that it would trigger a relapse or something. Marie, Marie, uh, uh, are, you go to 12-step meetings, obviously, right? Yes. Okay, I want you to ignore one thing. Every single thing people in the 12-step community tells you about antidepressants. You have a doctor at home that you're going to. Um, uh, it's very confusing sometimes because, sadly, in certain 12-step meetings, I'm not saying all, you have a lot of people that have a lot of opinions. Yeah, what I hear from yeah. her is that that's not even so much the issue, well, but it's the very real issue of her own psychology where I, I had this thing where I you were you were addicted to pills and you were taking right. pills for all these feelings and now you have a very legitimate reason for taking a pill and in your own head is that you're still taking a pill to alter how you're feeling. I mean that's what it's for because it's an antidepressant. I totally and completely yeah. understand and sympathize with you. And what I always say to alcohol straight alcoholics that don't understand that, I'm like, all right, how about this then? I want you to imagine you go to a doctor and the doctor says um, to deal with your depression or your anxiety, there's only one thing you can do. I want you to take one shot of tequila every eight hours. Never. And then they're like, oh, I get it. It's the same thing. And I, so I totally understand right. what you're going through, and the solution is talking about yeah, it. Yeah, and Marie, the reason I brought that up is because, you know, I go to 12 Steps, and Louie knows I'm the biggest fan of the 12 Steps. But sometimes you hear people talking about things that they're not so knowledgeable of. And it really scared me personally, Marie, for a really long time. I took Wellbutrin one time, right? And I got a really bad allergic reaction to it. Uh -huh. And so what did I do? I said, I might, maybe I'll try something else. Because my first reaction wasn't just, you know, because you were bringing up the Cymbalta. So yeah. what happened in the past isn't in the present. I know it's a huge fear of yours, but I want you to know they're two totally separate things. One is a drug that's going to help make your life increasingly better, and one was a drug that was making your life increasingly worse. Right. Do you get that? Yes, I, I do, but I'm, I'm just afraid that it would trigger a relapse or okay. trigger that. But like that Louis was happens. saying, Marie, if you keep on talking about it and be honest about this stuff and, keep, and just sharing about it, not always at a public level, but, you know, whether with your therapist or your psychiatrist... The one, yeah, the, the, I mean, that's the key to yeah. that. That's the key to that is, yeah. you know... It is a it's, hard issue. It's, it's, a very, it's very real. It's yeah. very, it's very... What you're talking about is so valid and so right on the money. And it's a, it's a... But it's just about, you know, whether it's with... If you have a sponsor in whatever 12-step meetings you go to, other women that you talk to, if you go to, like, a women's group or a women's meeting, let people close to you know what's going on, know what the, that you actually have right. this fear and trepidation about taking a medication that's going to alter your feelings and alter it because it's all very valid but talking about it is the one thing that we learn in recovery sharing about it not having any secrets in that regard is the one thing that will save us and make sure you share about it with people that have an understanding of what you're going through which yeah, is why I, which part. is yeah. why i said yeah. like if you have a women's group that you go to that they know you anyway yeah. and your sponsor obviously knows you and that's a safe person to talk to about that jonathan and they can help you like regulate because other yeah. people are going through the same things that you're going through and they'll know how to deal with this because they've dealt with it before that's exactly right you know it's uh marie you're doing the most amazing thing you know it's you and joe that called up earlier you know that are basically saying i know I, i'm done i have a i what you're asking for help, and it's such a cool thing that you're asking, Marie. Thank you. And can you do me a favor? Yes. I'd love for you to call back. When are you seeing your doctor next? Um, I'm not sure. Probably not until after the holidays. Okay. The thing, that, the thing that worries me is because I don't think she understands addiction very well because she was ready to prescribe me Ativan right. for sleeping, and I told her I can't take that. I'll tell you what. Where um, are you located? San, San Jose? Yes. Here's my, my advice to people that, that, I always, that I always tell people. If you take your car into a mechanic, right, and the mechanic quotes you $1,000, you, you, or a, a quote that sounds really high, I don't know why I said $1,000, that's how much my brakes need to cost to get fixed. Oh, but go to a different mechanic. And, not, and, and, and you know, when it comes to psychi psychiatrists or therapists, it should be like dating. Right. You don't jump into bed. Well, you know, you don't jump into bed. Every guy in the studio is looking at me like, what are you crazy? But sleep around when it comes to your psychiatrist until you find the husband you want to marry.
Marie, right. the the advice for tonight is you need to sleep around <laughs> with your with your psychiatrist. <laughs> no, okay, no, let's sleep really with good. your shrink. Yeah, right. Just go 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 for a second opinion, buddy. Absolutely, uh, Marie. Go for a second opinion, and there are plenty of people in the medical industry that are also uh, very well equipped and and are very enlightened as far as dealing with people that are addicts. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Marie. Are you on Facebook? Uh, no. If, uh, oh, you're not on Facebook. Um, no, can you not. email me at Judah, J-U-D-A-H, at Clean Center, K-L-E-A-N-C-E-N-T-E-R dot com? Okay. And pl- I beg of you to email me. We, we know a lot of sober and I, doctors. We know a lot of people all over. I, I, I promise you we'll find somebody in San Jose that's an addiction, that studies addiction and all that stuff, mm-hmm. if that helps. And Marie, okay. I totally uh, understand what you're going through. Whenever I go into the doctor, I always have to I always make sure yeah. that I that I advocate for my own sobriety right. and I tell them and I've had doctors try and prescribe me, oh, it's okay, you'll be fine, you're only going to take it once or twice, and I just have to tell them, look, it's got to be Tylenol or ibuprofen, and that's, that's what I, you but know. But there, there's one thing, Marie, if you do need to take meds, it doesn't make you less of a human. No way. You're still an amazing person, and I, I, I just I can't stress that enough to people out there that people that do have mental health issues, and I hate using that word, I call it a head break issue, you know, or a head vacation issue, like yourself or like me or like everybody in this studio, it's okay. Right. Okay? Yes. Will you yes, email me this week? Yes. You I promise? Will. Yes, I will. Okay, everybody in America has just heard that. And Marie, call us back <laughs> next week and let us know how you're doing, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And if you just tuned in, you are listening to Clean Radio. That was Marie from San Jose. Um, we're in the studio tonight with uh, my newest and dearest friend, Jonathan Freeman. Um, <laughs> my oldest and closest friend, Delmer Buddy Totten. <laughs> And a guy I somewhat like, Louis Sabatasso. Hey. He'll grow on you. <laughs> hey. He really does. And I got to tell you something about Louis. Can, do you mind if I share this story? No, please. This is years ago. And I'm going to get, we have a couple calls, but years ago, I'm driving down the street with my, I have a friend from New York, downtown Ronnie, a bit of a, you know, and uh, we're driving down Santa Monica Boulevard when they're tarring the streets. And my friend Ronnie, and I can't say the word, he said, he goes, would you look at that? And I look to the side and I see somebody jogging through, running through the tar on Santa Monica Boulevard. And I do one of these double takes and I go, Louie? <laughs> <laughs> and it was Louie and you didn't even, rem- you know, and that, and it's such a blessing to see you now. It makes me so happy that you're sober and that you're, you're not, you're, you're, you're living a life. Yeah, it was, um, I have no memory. Yeah. That could have been any number of a thousand, yeah. <laughs> thousand runs and, from wherever to wherever. And I don't say that, Louis, you know, we don't talk about these things about embarrassing. And yeah. we, we, we talk about them because we have to remember them. Yeah. And it's part of what we are. Yeah. It doesn't, it, it doesn't embarrass me. Okay, Gina, good. As you know, you know, cause it's, yes. Okay, good. And you're listening to clean radio. Let's get to a couple more calls. Uh, let's go to, uh, David. Welcome, David Martell. He always likes to have his last name in there, too. David Martell, welcome to Clean Radio. David, if I have to tell you to turn off yourself... David, you there? David, going once. David Martell going twice. Oh, that would have been so much fun. I love David Martell. There went David Martell. Let's go to Amy in Vancouver. Welcome back to Clean Radio, Amy. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing fine. I, I, um, I'm going to make this really quick, and then I'll hop off because I know it's towards the end of the show. It's okay. You can make it really slow. Okay. I have a 15-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 9-year-old boy in my living room with their mother who um, have fled uh, clear across the United States from domestic violence. And I've got these three boys that I've been kind of mentoring along with my own son, who is a recipient of his of his own father on drugs and i just wanted to know if if you guys in the studio there would give these boys that are actually watching the show on my laptop right now some encouraging uh encouraging words um just to kind of give them some hope um as far as you know some of the fears they may have and I want to, you know, Amy, that's a, an amazing question. I'm first, but don't, but don't, just stay on the line. I'm first, I'm going to go to Buddy, okay? Because Buddy sure. watched his dad oh, yeah. go through pure alcoholism. I mean, the worst, uh, the worst, the most severe alcoholism. I mean, the last time I, my dad drank, I saw him turn as yellow as a banana. And uh, I asked him if he, if he, you know, dyed his skin yellow, you know, when I was a kid. And he said, no, it, it, it was his liver, you know, and so... 
you know, it's, it's, uh, and, and, you know, my dad, uh, he, he passed away with uh, 13 years sober. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So he really came back, you know, from the brink of absolute hell. And we're talking about an amazing director. Um, yeah. You know, one of the ba the only reason he kept working was because he was so amazing. Well, this is true. Yeah. And uh, because, uh, so, Amy, that's, uh, you know, Buddy's story. So if the kid's at home, there is, uh, there's a lot of hope. There is absolutely a lot of hope. Louis? Yeah, man. It's, uh, you know, there's, there's so many, so many stories like that and so many people uh, like that out there that uh, are having amazing, positive experiences. And... Um, you know, they're there, you know, everything's going to be all right. You know, everything's going to work out. It's all going to be okay. And yeah. you're not alone. The, the most important thing to realize is that you're not alone. And listen to your grandmother. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. She right. loves you. Yeah. And uh, Amy, did that help at all? That helped wonderfully. Thank you so and much. And I want to tell you something. Are you guys going to be spending Thanksgiving together? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And if there's anything we could ever do for you, uh, you know, you could always give us a call. It's absolutely free. We have a facility up in Washington. It's 888-601-6040. It's 888-601-6040. And hopefully the second your loved one is able to get there, you know, and get ready, we have a place that they could go. Awesome. And to your kids, okay, they're 15, 9, and what? These are, these are my friend's kids. They're friend's um, kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. Um, can you email me at Judah at cleancenter.com? Yes, I can. And yes, I, I want to send them a gift for the holidays from Clean Radio. I would love to send them some stuff. Awesome. And awesome. I'd love to send them a good... What's a good comedy for the holidays? They've never seen planes, trains, and automobiles. That's a great one. That's a good yeah. one. Solid. They, they've yeah. never... Buddy, everybody agrees? Planes, Absolutely. trains? Okay. From Clean Radio, awesome. we're going to get send out so to much. you a bunch of stuff, Okay. Thank you very, very much. Please call back and keep us in the loop, Amy. I will. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Thank you. Guys. Happy thank holidays. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For everybody out there who hasn't realized this or doesn't know this, Judah has a intense, intense uh, John Hughes obsession. Oh, intense. And it, it, yes. uh, it's, uh, I have an email on my phone from him. He quotes him. Yeah. He quotes those people we talking about the greatest movies of all time, Citizen Kane, <sighs> The Godfathers <laughs> 1 and 2. We mentioned One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, and Judah, well, Judah will come in with you know, Uncle Buck. But Louis, <laughs> Uncle Buck oh, was God. just that's, a masterpiece. That's right. <laughs> and if you just tuned in, you are listening to Clean Radio. Let's go to Joe in Saskatchewan. Welcome to Clean Radio, Joe. I'm actually from Brooklyn. And this is my co-host with the most, the great and talented Andrew Spanswick. What's going on, Andrew? How, how did you figure that out so fast? Because you are horrible at accents. <laughs> God, that was bad, Andrew. Don't ever so quit your job as the owner and CEO of Clean Treatment Center. How are you, Andrew? Well, I was doing good, so I started listening to the show, and then you guys were making me depressed. You're giving away so much stuff. Wow. Uh, you know, Andrew, I get that from you. You did give away a bed last week. The least I could do is give away planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> That's how you keep it, right? Yeah. Give it away. Andrew, you, right. you, found, you found me on Facebook. Uh, I did? Yeah, you did. I, I had a friend oh, request cool. from, from you on Facebook. Yeah, I actually, it actually probably wasn't me. I hate to tell you this, but it was probably Brian. Why um, would Brian seek because, me out on Facebook? Because, <laughs> well, like, he God, handles my Facebook. I don't. <laughs> well, yes, really he's talking about to... Brian Kung Fu Panda. So, Andrew, you're right now where? In New York? Yeah, I'm upstate New York. And he's with his daughter for Thanksgiving, which is pretty awesome. Awesome. And my parents. And your parents. My daughter's little dog. And your and how's your little dog, Andrew? It's not my little dog. It's my daughter's little dog. No, your little dog, Sophie. She was sick my last dog's week. Sick. She's yeah. back in L.A. It's fascinating radio. I think we should turn this into the doggy hour. Yes, yeah, so let's turn. Let's take. Well, you actually do have a Facebook page. So, Andrew, send people a happy Thanksgiving from Clean Radio. Oh well, I just wanted to call and say hi, and uh, wish you guys best luck. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Happy holidays. I'm not there, so I figured you needed some luck. We do. <laughs> we need some luck and love. <laughs> we will talk to you later. Right. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy holidays, holidays to you. And um, that was Andrew Spanswick. Uh, he'll be back hopefully next week. We're in the studio tonight. If you just tuned in, David Martell, sorry, he uh, got lost in the shuffle. Mm. Obviously, he needs to yeah. re-up his cell plan. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I think we all need to remind David Martell for the holidays. I'm not giving you, David, from Clean Radio any cell phone minutes. No. But uh, <laughs> I want to you know, tell you to call next time. I want to thank Louis Sabatasso for being here. 
And uh, Louie's got a movie coming out this year called uh, Western Religion. Western Religion. You can find us on uh, uh, Twitter at Western Religion or at Third Partner or at, at Sabatasso Louie. At Western Religion, at Third Partner Pictures or at Sabatasso Louie. Um, find us, follow us, and uh, you'll see everything that happens in the wonderful life. Use your hashtags, Charlie. kids. And uh, I want to say something <laughs> cool. So, Jonathan, you're a writer, you're a comedian. Who do you write for? Because you said you wrote something for his movie. Right. Uh, writer, comic, actor, producer, drummer, where, anything you where need. Where can people... <laughs> you're hired out for events. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. And uh, for L.A., that's perfect, because there com could be a place you need to write and do comedy at the same time. It's necessary. I'm a slash. What do you write for L.A. what? Los Angeles Film and Music, LAFM.com. Or allaccess.com, you could find me there. And uh, where can people watch you perform? Uh, I'll be at the Comedy Store fairly soon uh, on Monday. And then on December 7th, my band Dirty Cakes has a show. Um, this out. is awesome stuff, by the way. I'm happy you brought them by. So let me ask you a question. Before you got sober, were you in Dirty Cakes? No, no, I didn't start Dirty Cakes until after I got sober. Were you performing at the Comedy Store? I was very sadly, but I was. Oh, okay, I was okay. Well, half I was good at there. So you you, you formed this band. You're performing at the Comedy We're Store. All sober. Life's in motion, nice. and it's going great. I'm I'm proud to be sober. It's, it just gets better, you know. Those dreams that you were talking about seem so distant when I'm loaded like that. And now that I'm sober, I get not only surrounded by the right people, but motivated to do the next right thing for those people. Yeah. That's awesome, and Beautiful. it really is. And I would love the next time you're, you know you're going to perform, please post on our Facebook. Louie and I, for sure, will go down there. Maybe I'll drag Buddy out sure. of his bed. And Buddy, <laughs> I just want to talk about something very quick. Buddy's sober for five years. Correct. You, um, you come from horrific alcoholism. True. And, and, you're, and you're a trooper. You're a survivor, and you've... You know, Buddy used to be in the movie industry. He was one of the best grips, right? No, I was oh. a cameraman. That was close enough. Yeah. And uh, he was it's one of the loader. best. I always like to say best. It was a loader in a second back when things were made with film. And, yeah. uh, and you've decided to dedicate your life to helping people. This is true. And yeah. it's a pretty awesome thing you're doing. And you have an amazing... He, he's a proud stepfather to a drug-sniffing dog named Rio. <laughs> oh, that's this amazing. Wow. And uh, he's, it's actually... Yay, clean. Rio. Rio actually put on... <laughs> <laughs> Rio no longer... Rio put on so much weight in rehab. He has. Yes. He's no longer the drug-sniffing dog. He's like, he is. He's like the food-sniffing dog. I just worked with him yesterday. He's doing great. Yeah. Everybody makes fun of his weight. Rio, Rio's doing if wonderful. If Rio's ever around, just hide your drugs up top. Because Rio did not get up there. And Buddy... He's, I lift him up, okay? Yes, you do. And Buddy, uh, he's uh, he's one of the, the nicest, coolest people I, I have ever met. And I mean well, that thanks, from the bottom man. of my heart. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Maisa. I want to thank everybody out there listening. Um, have a happy, safe Thanksgiving. Um, any problems you have, it's not that bad of a problem if you're alive. And That's give us right. a call at 888-601-6040 for anything you need. That's 888-601-6040. Discussion continues at cleanradio.com. Are you or someone you care about addicted to drugs or alcohol? Addiction ruins lives and destroys families. Bring an end to the pain and suffering by calling Clean Treatment Centers. Clean has helped people from around the world break free by not only treating the addiction, but the underlying causes and providing vital aftercare so people can get clean and stay clean with no gimmicks and no false promises. If you need immediate assistance or just have questions, call Clean Treatment Centers for guidance. A much better life awaits. 